coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. It's been 47 years since Anthony Drake won a provincial contest to design the Saskatchewan flag. And now he's returned to Hodgeville to embark on an extensive tour across the province. The long-awaited Leader Integrated Healthcare Facility, which was given provincial approval back in September of 2014, continues to fall behind its originally scheduled opening date of the summer of 2017. Since the City of Swift Current first launched the Safe Places initiative in January, the momentum has picked up through public awareness campaigns encouraging all individuals working or volunteering with youth to become safety certified. Thanks for joining us here today. Community Pride was in the spotlight as Hodgeville residents welcomed a special guest. We have more in today's top story. It's been 47 years since Anthony Drake won a provincial contest to design the Saskatchewan flag. And now he's returned to Hodgeville to embark on an extensive tour across the province. Drake, who now resides in England, enjoyed a jubilant homecoming in Hodgeville, a community where he and his wife were teachers for two years. Students and other residents welcomed Anthony and his wife Joan with a full day of celebration, which included a presentation at the local school, a parade, and an impromptu flag raising assisted by local residents. A long-awaited homecoming, which he was excited to be a part of. It brings back so many memories. And, I mean, we were here two years. We lived two minutes' walk away from the school. A lot of shops, a lot of things going on. I became an elk uh, as well and went through all the rituals of being an elk and we had lots of friends. And as he met one-on-one -on -one with students and other community members, he reflected on how he entered the flag contest and came up with the winning design. I got some coloured paper. Instead of trying to draw and paint a flag, it would look you know, a bit messy. You can't get nice, smooth colours with paint for a flag. So I thought solid colours of coloured paper would be a bit more realistic. So I got my uh, notebook out and scribbled some ideas of things that would be relevant to a Saskatchewan flag. Uh, you know, to get a design, you have to try all sorts of things. And I finished up with 13 different ideas for the flag with different combinations of colours in different ways, you know, vertical stripes or horizontal stripes and various little uh, iconic images. Anthony further says that when he was contacted that one of his 13 designs was chosen as the new Saskatchewan flag, the realisation took a while to sink in. Um, I couldn't believe it. And I felt, I felt like floating for the rest of the day. Uh, and, and even maybe the following day, you know, before it sank in. The story came into the press and all the details came out. There were 4,025 entries and I was flabbergasted at that, thinking that my one, one out of all those, it was, it was something I would never have dreamed of. And look what it's led to. A sense of appreciation and pride for Anthony Drake's efforts by the village of Hodgeville and an ongoing quest by local councillor and business owner Gail Hapanowitz, who's been working around the clock for the past two years to get Anthony the recognition he deserves. From phone calls to the office of the Premier and the Lieutenant Governor to communities around the province, Hapanowitz wanted to ensure everyone knew who Anthony Drake is and that he designed the flag while working in Hodgeville. I feel there's an injustice been done for him because he, he did a wonderful thing and he did get paid for it, and he did, you know, get invited to go to the to the legislature and see the flag being raised. But he never got the opportunity, and I just, and and he has nothing. He has nothing in his house. He has one little tiny flag that somebody had sent him. I just found out now he has a big flag that somebody sent him, and he has a pin, and that's all he has. This man designed our flag. He doesn't have baubles, and he doesn't have, you know, certificates, and he he does he doesn't have any of that stuff. And now following the homecoming in Hodgeville and a provincial tour for Anthony Drake throughout the month of May, she hopes the excitement of the Saskatchewan flag and its roots will spread across the province. 
every town and village and certainly the cities, but the towns and villages more because they're small. And if everybody did a flag day, some sort of celebration, it's everybody's flag. He designed it, but he designed it here. So that's why Hodgeville is, is special for that because he designed it in Hodgeville. A full itinerary of Anthony Drake's tour across the province is available through the home of the Saskatchewan Flag Foundation, Inc. Another exciting season of Market Square returns to downtown Swift Current, featuring live entertainment, fresh garden produce, crafts, and other unique vendors. Market Square, every Saturday at the corner of Central and Chaplin. Proudly presented by the City of Swift Current and Standard Motors, along with Innovation Credit Union and Southwest TV News. Following a delay in construction, Leaders Healthcare Project is back on track. We have more in this report. The long-awaited Leader Integrated Healthcare Facility, which was given provincial approval back in September of 2014, continues to fall behind its originally scheduled opening date of the summer of 2017. All due to the fact that original tender bids came in $4 million over budget. Now the Cypress Health region has approved new schematic designs with a second round of tenders on the horizon. Beth Vashon is the CEO for the Cypress Health region and indicates how a few small changes in the designs will keep the $12 million project on budget. What changed is that rather than adjoining the two buildings together, uh, it's a doorway into the new part of the building. And what we found is that when you start to do things like renovating and then adding new on, there's some significant cost with that, just trying to connect heating systems and all those kinds of things. So to actually just build a full freestanding building and connect it with the door was far more cost effective. So we didn't lose a whole lot in the design. A few things, we, you know, we made adjustments so it all fit on the site properly, but uh, our staff and our family members who have been participating, quite pleased that uh, we've been able to maintain the integrity of what they came up with at the start of uh, their planning process. And if all goes according to plan, residents of Leader and area should see movement at the site in the coming months. Uh, I guess regardless of what that time looks like, we're, we're still trying to get to that, um, you know, getting the site ready and, and equipment on the ground by fall. Once completed, the integrated health care facility and Leader will bring together acute, primary, long-term care and ambulance services all under one roof with the Western Senior Citizens Home. Swift Current Safe Places initiative is gaining momentum, with donations coming in from local organizations. Since the City of Swift Current first launched the Safe Places initiative in January, the momentum has picked up through public awareness campaigns encouraging all individuals working or volunteering with youth through sport, culture or other activities to become safety certified. A program which involves an online component and a background check through the RCMP. All falling in line with the City of Swift Current's mandate to offer a safe and caring community. A program which is gaining interest with local residents and those beyond the southwest border. Maple Creek is uh, um, uh, on board uh, right as uh, they, they have been uh, the entire time. Um, I've talked uh, you know, to um, provincial politicians in Nova Scotia, uh, obviously to other mayors throughout the province, and uh, I was asked by the City Mayor's Caucus it'll be on the agenda for uh, our meetings in May, so we'll be talking about it there. So I think uh, interest will grow. It's one of those things that people have to wrap their head around if you haven't been involved in minor sports or something like that, which uh, does represent a lot of folks that are on the municipal level. And at a recent council meeting, the Safe Places Initiative received a check for $1,000 from Community Future Southwest. It's a community uh, project that's going to improve the living conditions within the community and even the surrounding area. And we're targeting the youth because I think that uh, when you do that, if you can help uh, young people understand that they've got a safe place to grow and to not be afraid, 
uh, that could do nothing but uh, help them with their own uh, self-worth and establishment of uh, good feelings and safeness within uh, the community that they're growing in. I think that if we do that, we can remove some of the uh, anger that is created because of these kind of situations. And uh, young people can grow up to be good, solid citizens and understand that the kind of behavior that happened is unacceptable. Welcome support for this local program, which will be put to good use. You know, some of the groups that aren't affiliated with uh, large organizations like SAS Sport or Hockey Canada that uh, want to make sure that their folks can get uh, the training and, and whatnot, uh, I think we'll probably look to put it towards that to make sure it's uh, as accessible for everyone as it can be. To date, over 200 individuals have become certified through the Safe Places Initiative. More information on the program can be found online. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at mylocaltv.ca. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.